Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and this deck idea was actually submitted by one of my patrons. It was added to the Patreon poll, and then it won the poll, so now we're here with a mono red deck nicknamed Goblin Party, as it uses a lot of the new creatures with the party mechanic from Zendikar Rising, and we also have a bit of a goblin sub theme. And one of the most important creatures in the deck isn't actually a goblin, but it's Ardent Electromancer, 3 mana for a 3 2 human wizard, that when it enters the battlefield adds a red mana to our mana pool for each creature in our party. So party members include clerics, rogues, warriors and wizards. Now sadly there's no clerics in mono red and standard at the moment, so we can't achieve a party of 4, but we can pretty realistically achieve a party of 3 in this deck since there's no shortage of rogues and warriors in mono red, and then the electromancer is the third party member being a wizard itself, so we can pretty realistically play the electromancer and add 3 mana to our mana pool, so it's kind of like a 3 mana version of burning tree emissary which saw a decent amount of play and then with the three mana from Electromancer we could potentially play additional copies of Ardent Electromancer but the card we really want to play is a Shadow Skull Minotaur, 6 mana for a 5-4 Minotaur Warrior with haste, that costs 1 less to cast for each creature in our party, so if we have a party of 3, the Minotaur only costs 3 mana to give us a 5-4 haste, so we can potentially play this on turn 3 after playing a copy of Ardent Electromancer, so that's one of those powerful draws that our deck is capable of. Now let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we have the full play set of Fireblade Charger, 1 mana for a 1-1, Goblin Warrior that has haste as long as it's equipped, and when it dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so it's an improved version of Goblin Arsonist. And then we also have the full play set of Sneaking Guide, it's a 1-1 Goblin Rogue, and for 2 mana, target creature with power 2 or less cannot be blocked this turn. So we're mainly playing this for the creature types, it's a Goblin for the Goblin Synergies in the deck, and then of course it's a Rogue to help us complete our party. And then at 2 mana we've got the full play set of Grotank Bug Catcher. It's a 1-2 Goblin Warrior with Trample, and when the Bug Catcher attacks it gets plus 1 plus so until end of turn for each creature in your party. So if the Bug Catcher is the only creature in play it still attacks as a 2-2 Trample, but we can pretty easily get up to a 3-2 Trample or even a 4-2 Trample with a party of 3, so it does hit pretty hard. Then we also have the full playset of a Robber of the Rich, just as a powerful individual card, that's also rogue for party purposes. It's a 2-2 with a reach and haste, and when it attacks, if the opponent has fewer cards in hand than we do, we can exile their top card, and potentially play that card if it's not a land, if a rogue attacked this turn, so it can provide a nice bit of a virtual card advantage. And then we also have the full playset of Conspicuous Snoop, a 2-2 Goblin Rogue, which makes us play with the top card of our library revealed, so it does give the opponent some additional information as well. And then we can cast Goblin spells from the top of our deck, so as long as we keep finding more Goblins, Snoop can provide a lot of card advantage as well. And then as long as the top card of our library is a Goblin card, the Snoop has all the activated abilities of that card, which can potentially be relevant if there's a Sneaking Guide or a Goblin Trash Master on top. And then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Art and Electromancer, and then there's no shortage of spells we can play with the 3 mana that we can potentially generate with the Electromancer. And then we also have the full playset of a Relic Robber, a nice addition from Zendikar Rising. It's a 2-2 Goblin Rogue with haste, and when the Relic Robber deals combat damage to a player, that player creates an 0-1 colorless Goblin Construct artifact creature token that says it cannot block, and at the beginning of your upkeep it deals 1 damage to you. Sometimes it's enough to give the opponent one or two of these Goblin Construct tokens to slowly but surely win the game. And then the robber also plays quite well with Double Strike from Embercleave, as we can potentially give the opponent two Construct tokens in one turn. And then at 4 mana we've got three copies of Goblin Trashmaster, a 3-3 Goblin Warrior that gives other goblins we control plus 1 plus 1, and we can sacrifice a goblin at any point to destroy target artifact, which can be relevant against opposing Amber Cleaves or maybe Great Henges. We could also be playing Torbran at 4 mana, although it doesn't have any relevant creature types for party, and the Trashmaster has a bit more synergy with the Conspicuous Snoop. And then topping off our curve, we've got the full playset of Shatter Skull Minotaur, which we can sometimes play for just 3 mana, giving us access to a 5-4 haste. And then 3 copies of Amber Cleave, which is great to put on our Shatter Skull Minotaur or maybe a Relic Robber to help us end the game as well. 
And then the mana base has the full playset of Shatter Skull Smashing, a land we can play untapped at the cost of 3 life, but we can also play it as a sorcery dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers, and if X is 6 or more the smashing deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead, so it just gives us a nice removal spell. And we also have the full playset of Castle Ambereth alongside 14 basic mountains. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with not a great hand. Is it a keepable hand? We do have the synergy between Sneaking Guide and Relic Robber, which can be pretty nice to make sure the robber can keep attacking. Really just need to draw two lands in a row here. I'll try it. A land plus Electromancer would also be great. So I probably start with I think the Charger. Since we have a lot of two-mana rogues we could potentially draw into as well. Alright, land is good. If we can connect with a Relic Robber, that would be great. Opponent with an opt end of turn. Keeps the card on top. Blue reds. So they could have some burn spells here. Still just gonna play as the relic robber since we don't have anything else going on. Gets countered by lofty denial. Alright. Next turn we have the option of either Minotaur or Trashmaster. Probably gonna lead with the Minotaurs, my guess. Sprite Dragon. Ooh, another Relic Robber. I think if they have a Shock here, I would rather just play the Minotaur. Opponent's down to 10. Gonna be Stomp from Bone Crusher plus maybe a second Stomp or a Royal Eruption to finish off the Minotaur. Sprite Dragon stays back, so I guess we'll just play a Trash Master and pass. And next turn we could do the same. Now sadly, Trashmaster does make it so Relic Robber has more than two powers, so we can't make it unblockable with the Sneaking Guide. Could have also still attacked with the Fireblade Charger, since it would have traded for the Sprite Dragon. But if we get to play second Trashmaster, we can maybe trade for more. Sprite Dragon does attack now. Ooh, Shadow Skull Smashing could also be a nice one. So if I play Trash Master, if I attack with everyone, they would take six trade for Trash Master. I think we just send Sneaking Guide and Charger here, and then I'm okay if the Sneaking Guide trades for Giants, and then I'm not sure if I should play the Smashing as a land or not. I can use Castle Ambereth no matter what. And I'm probably not going to be able to use a Relic Robber plus Sneaking Guide to make it unblockable. Yeah, I should probably keep it in hand. That way if I draw land I can maybe take out Bone Crusher Giant. Opponent with another opt. Into another Sprite Dragon, which they probably drew off the opt, is my guess, and then a Stormwing Entity, so they've got some nice blockers out. Opponent 
opponent passes. A relic robber to draw. I guess I could smashing for two, take out Sprite Dragon, deal one to the 5-5 five five Sprite Dragon, attack with everyone. And then they would trade for one Trash Master. They would eat the Sneaking Guide with the Sprite Dragon. But then if they trade for Stormwing, that's good for me. So I think that's the play here. 2, 1, 1. So Bone Crusher blocks one Trash Master, Sprite Dragon could either trade or eat a 3-3. Three, three. It's gonna trade. And then have to take the damage from Charger, but if the Charger dies at any point, my opponent's just dead. So they're gonna eat the Sneaking Guide and chump Trash Master, but it's gonna trade once the other Trash Master dies. So yeah, that's fine, Putin falls to one. And they're left with a 5-5 Sprite Dragon. And we're left with a 1-1 Fireblade Charger. And then we've got some hasty Relic Robbers to maybe end the game. They need a blocker that doesn't kill the Charger somehow. Shock to the face. Puts me to seven. And they seem pretty dead here. Maybe they have a bounce spell. So having a second attacker could be relevant. And wow, they actually had a Brazen Borrower. So they would have survived. Good thing Relic Robber can be blocked by Brazen Borrower. So the game ended up being super close here in the end, but the Goblin Party got the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, not an amazing hand, but I guess we'll keep. We've got a Rogue and Warrior, so drawing Electromancer would be fine. Probably hang on to the Smashing since we've got a lot of lands already. Opponent on the Mono White, a life gain deck, already up to 23. And Gryphonary makes a token, so opponent with an excellent start. Play Buck Catcher for now. And then next turn I might be forced to kill Speaker of the Heavens before it makes any Angel tokens, since they're getting close to 27. Ooh, Electromancer, so can go Electromancer into Snoop. I mean, my opponent isn't gaining any life next turn. So what's the worst case scenario that they play Fates Fetters and then Speaker of the Heavens turns on, but it can attack with the Buck Catcher here. So I think that's fine. We'll wait a turn on killing it. Buck Catcher smashes for four. And then Smashing can hopefully deal with the Speaker before it turns into a problem. Or we can just play Trash Master. Banishing Light's gonna deal with the Snoop. Alright, so a Trash Master would pump the Buck Catcher as well. No rogue, but it would still have four power, so we can attack past the wall. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Next turn my opponent gains two up to 21, but they're still far from 27. Could also next turn maybe uh, use my charger, sacrifice it to the trash master, and then kill speakers that way, and then kill the wall as well. So that's a nice interaction. What we don't want to see is like a Baneslayer Angel here or an Archon of Sun's Grace. 
there's Archon of Sun's Grace. This looks a lot like the Mono White Life Gain deck that I featured recently in an article on Channel Fireball, so you can always check that out if you want some inspiration. Alright. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, this Archon of Sun's Grace is going to be hard to beat if they have any enchantments left in hand. I can play Smashing Untapped, play Charger, destroy the wall, destroy Speaker, and then still play Minotaur. I guess that's not bad. And then next turn, a second Trash Master can pump the team once again. Bone falls to eight. Let's see if they have any enchantments left. When Arkan attacks, they also get to make an extra Griffin token, so... We're also down to five in the meantime. Shatter the sky. All right, well, they still get to make a Griffin token end of turn, but at least uh, Archon of Sun's Grace is gone, I guess. This has reach, so we can block the Griffin. Although, is that better than just playing a Trash Master here? I guess we'll go Trash Master, and then next turn I can go Robber into Minotaur. Potentially, I guess we'll need to draw land for that to work. And there's Baneslayer Angel. Alright, I think we're uh, pretty dead here. I can survive by chumping the Baneslayer Angel, but that's not really a winning strategy. Yeah, the only way we can beat a Baneslayer Angel is if we have an Amber Cleaved Minotaur, maybe. But that's not the case here. And there's a Maze Mine Tomb. Alright. Shatter Skull Smashing is almost good enough to kill the Bane Slayer. We're one mana short. So best I can do is kill the two Griffins, smash for eight. Which is not enough to win the game here. But I guess we'll still go for it. Alright, so close and interesting game against the Mono White Life Gain deck. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand, I guess. We do rely pretty heavily on the extra cards from Snoop and Robber of the Rich to do some work. So far, our hand is all rogues, so not the best for a party. Merfolk Wind Robber. Do I have to play a robber on defense to block the Wind Robber? That feels pretty miserable. I think I still attack here. Found a Jewari Disruption. Opponent does trade. Pretty happy with that trade. I don't actually know if I can play this as a land, or if it's only as a spell. Yeah, it's only cast that card, so not play. So I don't think we can play it as a land. 
So for now, I guess we'll play land attack, see what we hit. Crown in the lock, one card in graveyard. Play Snoop and guide, I guess. Snoop first in case they have disruption or another drown. It's gonna be a thief. And a trash master on top. Opponent has to take three from their under crypts. And it's gonna be a thief skilled enforcer milling us, getting rid of that trash master. Can I have an amber cleave? I don't think I can. So they're probably gonna play another rogue or attack with the thief to mill me. It is pretty funny that the snoop gives the opponent a lot of additional information. Well, there's another trash master anyway. Might get countered. But we got it for free, so it doesn't feel too bad. And yeah, let's attack with all. They're pretty close to turning on the Thought Thief here. So now all rogues get plus one plus zero, and the Enforcer also has Death Touch. Land on top, not the best. I can still use my Sneaking Guide here to maybe sneak in some goblins. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what to play is. I guess I could sneak and play Buck Catcher instead of playing the Trash Master. Trash Master doesn't necessarily enable any amazing attacks if they can kill it. Otherwise, they get to kill my Trash Master and then ambush my Snoop, which seems pretty bad for me. I could also sneak in the Robber of the Rich. And then cast Drown in the Loch. I guess that's decent. So let's do that. And then this can kill... Thief. Opponent draws a card with the Wind Robber. Suppose I could have maybe also attacked with the Snoop. Since we were gonna kill the Thought Thief, so this was gonna shrink down again. Hagra Mauling kills Robber. But now we're at the point where the Sneaking Guide's ability is going to come in handy. I guess I could still play Trash Master instead of Bug Catcher. Hit him for three. And then next turn we've got a Hasty Minotaur coming up. Drown kill Sneaking Guide. Amber Cleave is next, that's a good one. Thief in response, and our opponent packs it in. Alright, so yeah, we got to see some of the neat little interactions here with our Robber of the Rich and our Sneaking Guide to help us close out the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with Unacceptable hands. A lead with Charger, so we go Warrior into Rogue in case we pick up some party synergies. And then Amber Cleave is a pretty good curve topper, as it turns out.
facing evolving wilds, so this is likely a landfall ramp deck. Ooh, Electromancer shows up. So our best top deck here would be a Minotaur, as we get to go Electromancer into Minotaur. Opponent off to a slow start with a bunch of fetch lands that come into play tapped. Alright, just picked up a mountain, so not the most exciting turn here. Uh, I could also attack with robber first, I guess that's fine. And then see what we get with uh, the robber's ability. Ooh, skew swarm. I guess it works. Electromancer into swarm. And then next turn we can potentially Amber Cleave. And Ride of Legion Grove. We'll hold on to the Shadow Skull Smashing. Sack with all of these. Hit Omnath. We just get to play the opponent's deck here. And we'll Amber Cleave them. Play a Sneaking Guide. And then maybe next turn we get to play Omnath. And our opponent just explodes too far behind. And yeah, got a nice curve out draw featuring the Electromancer, so doing a nice impression of Burning Tree Emissary. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not amazing. We have a few too many warriors, so the Electromancer is going to be pretty weak. This is better. We've got warriors and a rogue. The Minotaur is still going to be pretty pricey at 4 mana. So I think I just bottomed the uh, Minotaur here and then we get to curve 1, 2, 3. Well, there's another Minotaur. So if we find land 4 and our creatures survive, it's still going to be pretty decent. Opponent also with a turn 2 Buck Catcher. Alright. I guess I'm fine attacking into it. Or I could stay back to trade, that's maybe better. And if my opponent has their own Relic Robber, we can also block it with the Charger. It's going to be a Cargon Intimidator. Definitely a card you could consider in this deck as well, if you want to increase the number of Warriors. So if I play Robber, it would just be trading for Intimidator. I can't use Smashing to kill it, because they can pump it. So, I think I'm also debating just playing robber and not attacking with it. And then next turn we get to play the Minotaur for 4. Now the question is, does the Buck Catcher attack? Can attack as a 3 to Trample? I guess that's fine. They could double block and pump, but I would be pretty happy to trade for Intimidator. Opponent is a Red White Warriors and a Luminarch Aspirant. It's definitely a good one. Let's see where they put the counter. If they put it on the Buck Catcher, it makes for a pretty good blocker. Although they could go down a different path. Intimidator turns my Charger into a Coward, so it can no longer block Warriors. Buck Catcher gets in for four, we'll take it. Now Shadow Skull Smashing is a sorcery, so I can't deal one and one in response to them pumping. 
And of course, if I go one and one, they just turn this into a four two. So I think I'm just better off playing the Minotaur and then attacking. And then the Relic Robber can attack as well. And I guess so can the Bug Catcher and we'll just leave the Charger back. Opponent has to decide if they want to trade for the Relic Robber or the Minotaur. And they just take it instead. Down to seven, down to six. All right, let's see what they have in mind here. Maybe their own Minotaur. It's gonna be a robber of the rich. Might be able to close out the game with our smashing next turn, we'll see. Puts counter on the construct token. Fair enough. And robber hits smashing. And uh, I guess we can block the robber here. Could try and take out Aspirants. Although next turn I can kill Intimidator and Aspirant at the same time. So we'll just kill the robber here. And that looks right. And there we go, opponent explodes and the goblin party defeats a red-white party. So overall, so that can have some pretty awesome opening hands. If you can curve turn three Electromancer into the Minotaur especially, and then Embercleave a nice cherry on top. But on the other hand, if the opponent has a lot of interaction, burn spells to kill all your small creatures, they can pick apart your synergies and then your cards individually aren't incredibly powerful. So being on the play is important and avoiding too much interaction is important as well. So it's not going to be the most competitive deck out there, but definitely pretty fun if you've got the cards for it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.